Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. Now, if you followed our channel for a while, we do a lot of music tutorials. We do piano, we do ear training, we do theory, we do composing, bass, and what not. However, of late, we've started focusing a lot on music production, and I've been fortunate enough to be part of the music technology field for many years. But I've had no real training. It's just been exposure with sound engineer friends who obviously are extremely skilled. They've gone through the degrees and the courses to do what they do with their craft. And I've also figured out a lot of things along the way because it needs to be done. Because if you're a musician playing a gig and it sounds bad, there's a lot of feedback on stage. The amp is rumbling. Um, you can't hear things pretty well. And you feel that the guy doing sound is a bit slow or unskilled. It's always a kind of an itchy feeling you get to 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 do that yourself, you know, and get acquainted. So my exposure to sound has always been in this more street smart kind of way. I've not had any training. And even with our YouTube channel, we do our lessons. But at the end of the day, we have to shoot a video. Uh, as, you, as you see, we have audio. We want to make the audio to sound as good as possible. We want the video and the audio to come together in the best way possible. So there is a lot of technology which we use to back our work and that's what I wanted to talk about and we use a lot of technology to back our work. Now in this video I'm not going to talk about the technicalities of music production. We are going to be doing a lot more and we have done a few. In, in this video it's just to convey to all of you music producers out there. Maybe you've done a course in a school or you're doing a course or you'd like to learn mixing, mastering but take it from me. These 10 skills which I'm going to convey to you over this lecture are going to equip you for the long run as a musician and you probably need to know these things before you do all the other technical stuff like which plugin to get or which VST to find out there or which MIDI keyboard to buy it's not so much about the hardware and the software and the gear it's more about what's going on in your head or what your head needs to know uh, in order to produce music well so here are 10 necessary things you need to know as a music producer. Let's get cracking. First of all, music theory is supremely crucial and I find a lot of students, including music students who don't know production, who think that music theory is just staff notation. Oh, I have to do all these grade exams, learn reading, writing, piano, treble clef, bass clef. Absolute nonsense. That is not music theory. Music theory is knowing your chords, knowing your scales, knowing your intervals, being able to count time, being able to subdivide the beat, understanding accents, learning key signatures, learning scales, learning modes, learning ragas, and not just learning it from a textbook way. Now, the problem with production, especially a lot of people who do production in schools, I find that they learn all the technicality in a nice real-world way. You know, the they have a laptop, they produce, they do their adjustments with equalization, compression, effects and whatnot. But then at the end of the day, the source, the first thing going into the software is music. So the music has to be taken care of first of all. So you need to have a grounding over the core essentials of music. You need to know if there's a song playing on 7 by 8 meter or maybe this one. You need to know that it's not one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's actually one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. It's a five by eight song, the Mission Impossible theme. You might have heard that, right? So your music theory is not necessarily notation, even though that is very helpful. Reading notation, sight singing, working with rhythms, reading rhythms as we call it, <clears throat> reading choral music. These are all very important skills. Don't get me wrong. But actually, music theory at the bare minimum is know how to feel and count time. Learn subdivisions. Learn your chords and scales and not just learn it. Be fast at it. So for that you need to practice what you learn. You shouldn't just mug it up or watch videos or read books. You know, you have to, for example, you need to know if there's an A flat in there, it's major sixth is to do F. 
that's a major six and f is a major six with respect to a flat also a flat is a minor third with respect to f also a flat major has four flats namely b flat e flat a flat d flat also the chords of a flat major are a flat major b flat minor c minor d flat major e flat major f minor g diminished and a flat which is the repeat so all of these things need to be learned you know the core essentials of theory you can't really make music you can't arrange you can't produce you can't compose if you don't know your theory so get acquainted with theory so point number 2 is extremely important it's having the ability to perform a song as a one person band on one polyphonic instrument by polyphonic instrument i mean guitar or piano or banjo or mandolin or something like that and vocals so if you are composing a song and if it has lyrics if it has a structure verse chorus bridge and what not we tend to then allow or hope that sometimes that production and all the loops that we use in our logic pros and ableton lives of the world that is going to make us the song sorry it is you your guitar your chords your melody which is making the song the software or the daw is just there to embellish what you have already composed so a great challenge would be for you yourself to perform the song and not just play it on the piano and sing you should also convey that do a small simple cell phone recording send it to your loved ones your friends your family or your mentors and see what they have to say about it and if there is a tick mark given that oh this is a nice song i like this structure it's also going to end up being a lot more easy for you to produce it because you won't need to make any structural changes which end up being the most annoying and the most tricky things to do in a song oh i want to cut that chorus into two i want to remove the bridge i want a new bridge why have all that hassle don't get into the software until it already sounds good and it it should be as i say gig worthy and i have a lot of sort of musician colleagues in in my city where most of them have actually told me we need to gig this song we need to play this song over and over get the pulse of the audience get the feedback from peers friends and loved ones and then go to the studio record produce and take it to town you could also do it the other way you know produce it and then perform it that a lot of people also do that but it should just be a nice song it should be something you can just perform on a guitar or a piano and sing it for sure so that's point number 2 So if you're getting into production arrangement recording editing mixing mastering or any field in music technology you need to know the workings of the actual instrument you're dealing with so if you're recording a drum kit for example you have to know the parts of the drum kit the kick the snare and the way you can play the snare you can play the snare either with the side side stick or the rim shot as they call it in the middle of the snare you can play the snare with brushes you can play it with hot rods you can play it with actual sticks your kick drum will have different beaters so there's so many components there's also the tuning of the kit you tune the toms very tastefully to serve the song in a lot of cases it doesn't have to be in the scale of the song that's weird sometimes some uh, technicians do tune their uh, drums to the scale of the song but uh, generally you just tune it to taste and you need to know that the drums need to be tuned how to fix ring in the drums resonance random you need to have a kit to to help you manage your drum tech and then of course you use your mics accordingly you realize oh the drums have so many parts i need to mic it this way i need this kind of mic for this this kind of instrument and it's the same with everything like for example uh, a guitar the way i record guitar would be a person is playing the guitar and whenever a person plays the guitar i think the guitar always sounds best from the perspective of the person playing the instrument it's the same with the drums it's the same with tabla anything so just put a mic on top of their head or next to their ears which don't annoy them you know uh, so things like that and when you're recording an instrument like a vocal you need to know the challenges of maybe a male vocalist and a female vocalist you need to know when they are tired when you can't just treat them as robots so to speak however that might happen in the future also understand the ranges of your instruments violins yes they go high but not 
too high. You don't want them to screech like a hyena. You uh, also violins cannot go low. For that, you need the cello. You need the string quartet. You need the family of instruments, right? So every instrument, down to the smallest shaker or the triangle, if ever you're recording it or using a loop on your computer, you need to know the workings of that instrument. And a great way to do that, the best way to do that, is go for local concerts or gigs in your city and watch how people play these instruments. Don't be stuck just in a laptop trying to do things. It won't really happen. Moving forward to point number four. This might annoy some of you, but it's very, very important. Learn how to sing. Okay, so a lot of times when we produce music, the quickest way, because there is no filter between the brain and your vocal cords, so to speak. So if I have an idea or if someone else is conveying an idea, that guy will say, can you just play... You know? So he's singing it for me or I'm singing it for, for them or that group of musicians. And... Once the thought comes to me, I can then focus on my work. And I can also suggest another idea and say, do you like this? Like... Now, obviously, you should have the ability to match this, but the basic requirement is to be able to pitch something, okay? As a producer, you may be the best guy using Logic Pro or uh, Cubase or Pro Tools, but if you don't know how to sing, sorry, you're not going to survive much. Or you, you'll, you'll only have your own, maybe your own niche, so to speak. So it's always good if you're new to this field, Learn how to sing. Make a conscious effort and it's a free instrument. Come on, you don't have to pay for servicing. There's no upgrade. It is what it is. You're born with a voice. It's a gift, so to speak. So deal with it. Get used to singing. Go for a singing class somewhere along the way. Nathaniel School offers vocal classes too, by the way. So do check us out. The fifth necessary thing you need to do as a music producer is knowledge of street smart tech. So I don't mean when the software opens, you know exactly what to do. You know all the shortcuts, you've done one uh, 101 or you've done one operator level certification. So what? What if your software cannot even open? What if there's a bug? How are you going to fix that? What if your audio interface is crackling? What if there's a sample rate mismatch? There are many things. What if your speaker is picking up some random electrical interference or... What if there's a problem with your guitar pickup, which is now sending some random uh, radio which is playing from your neighbor, which is coming into the pickup and then getting recorded? How do you fix those problems, you know? So you have to take care of all your... The, the geeky stuff, the electrical stuff out there is very important. Also, acoustically, you have to be aware if anything is ringing in your room. It could just be you have to go to your guitar and just put a cloth around it or mute your snare to stop the resonance from the, the, the snare buzz which happens on the snare wires. Uh, so, I would say street smart tech, you know, just having little things like adapters to help you uh, you know, if you have to plug and change something really fast, just having a few things at your disposal, the smallest of things can save your recording. A simple adapter, a simple power cable, a replacement for something, anything which helps you focus on your craft is what I mean by street smart tech. And street smart tech is not just the door you have from a software perspective. It's also knowing... All the plugins that you have, you need to make a note of it and you have to see whether the latest version of those plugins or those virtual instruments are going to work with your current operating system. Maybe you haven't upgraded your operating system or maybe you should not upgrade your operating system. You should wait a bit longer before you do so. So this is what I mean by street smart tech. It's all my Advice for street smart tech is again to go for concerts. Observe what sound engineers do from a live perspective. I've learned the most about sound. Probably all that I've ever learned about sound has come by, by observing and sort of assisting live 
technicians live sound engineers i have a lot of friends uh, who i've made over the years who who mix music live i don't have too many mix mixers who produce unfortunately i would love i would like to meet some of them too uh, but it's more of the live guys so the live guys will show you how to solve real problems like, like you're getting a shock on stage how do you figure that out now that needs a lot of street smart tech and along with street smart tech you need to know a few other things you know uh, learn learn microsoft excel or google sheets and document your work these things are as important get a productivity software maybe use a timer to help you be more productive so all of these things can help you you can also get some devices to just help you produce music faster help you with shortcuts help you with some macros so to speak so whatever works for you make a proper plan and invest in street smart tech so that you focus primarily on your craft you're spending maximum time making music rather than fixing problems. problems making music then fixing problems and then making music that won't inspire you a lot and then a very very important thing you need to listen to a lot of music and when i say a lot of styles and genres it doesn't have to be the music which you are going to produce it can be anything for example you may not like taylor swift but you could still listen to her production you can still listen to her songwriting her song structure the way she develops you know breaks drops build ups in the music the instruments used what is the role of each instrument right every artist which has reached our years over time has done something right along the way otherwise they would have never reached you so you have to respect all musicians and make playlists on spotify or ask your friends ask your family members what are you folks listening to and try to diversify your music listening repertoire or your library back in the day there was something nice which used to happen come to think of it where you had to go to a store like we had planet m in india and you go there and you have to sort of save up money to buy a two sided uh, cd or a, a two disc to listen to music or maybe a dvd it used to cost a lot of money in in india back then but all of that has stopped so what i tend to think is you tend to value music less you tend to search for music less even though there is everything out there but you're searching for something which is free It's pretty much free right spotify come on that subscription is almost nothing youtube is free so you you don't you're not motivated to find music you're not thinking of music as an investment you're not spending on it so you're not you're not tending to value it as much as what we used to do maybe 90s to the early 2000s and then of course the iphone and torrents and all of that came into play and pretty much they didn't it didn't kill the music industry but it definitely changed the way we consume music so now you need to ask your well wishers you need to ask your musician peers what do you folks listen to tell me a metal band even though you haven't heard heavy metal understand what it's about and consume the music you have to listen to everything being a producer needs your ears to also acknowledge the genre and if you acknowledge the genre you'll know what instruments are used what are the settings they use to get that instrument to pop out in the mix so to speak so listen to a lot of music and take it from me the music i tend to produce the best is generally music i would never listen to just to you know sit down and lounge on a sofa i'm not going to listen to that for instance i like listening to heavy metal a lot but i don't produce it that often i produce folk music and fusion music a lot more which i rarely listen to for some reason so that's the point i'm trying to make you know so you never know what you will produce very well you may not you may even hate that genre but go for it and be open to uh, working with different environments and then a very important point it's something i tend to tell myself very often as well as a human in general you need to 
improve your general communication skills and be open to work so one way to do that is to find musicians go to concerts and talk to them and tell them this is what i do build up a profile build up a portfolio and just it it should just have a list of things you have done in life so 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 far as a musician maybe you've got a few awards certificates you've performed a few shows you've jammed with a few interesting people so put that out there in a profile and start talking to people and be very open for work don't just say i am only going to do blues music for life that won't work if you want to become a music producer you have to be equipped with working with many people also as a producer you need to understand them more as people than as skill set uh humans you know they possess some skills you know those skills very well and you can get work out of them well what if they are in a bad mood what if they are not giving you their 100% in the recording is it because of something physical or something emotional so you have to figure that out so you need to know your talent you need to know your colleagues your musician friends as people so you can tell when is the right day to get them for a recording when is the right day to give them a phone call what is the right time or you just have to soldier through the process if you have a deadline you know so you have to communicate well to musicians tell them what we need to do put the project also out put the deadline of the project having a deadline for any task is always good even if you're doing it personally tell yourself see by march end this has to be out there or by may the 13th it's a release and have a plan okay so moving on right so the eighth point would be optimize your workflow okay so not all of us have let's say a good 16 hours to produce music in a day if you if you're like me i'm a teacher i also do a lot of admin work in the school which is nathaniel school of music i also gig i do this and that so even just being a musician there are a lot of sub fields we get into so you need to see how much of time you can and should dedicate to the field of production and try to optimize your workflow so whenever i produce music i always give myself an hour i literally have a timer a 60 minute timer where i tell myself after 60 minutes i need to go out to the garden or i need to take a walk or i just need to stop this work because Men- mental fatigue is one thing but there's also physical fatigue it can hurt your eardrum so if you're mixing a song or if you're producing a song and if you're not in the zone and if you're not aggressive about the process i know i'm using harsh words but i'm telling you this so that you can protect your hearing and also get way more work done in that 1 hour than not and the thing about it is if you do 4 hours of lukewarm work a it is inefficient because you're 25 you're doing 25% of what you could do right the other problem is quality takes a hit you may think if we work fast quality is going to suffer it won't suffer if you are intense about your work so when you're doing your production work and if you actually have that hour from 5 to 6 am or 7 to 8 pm before your dinner what you need to do is you need to push yourself you need to get it done and have a hard stop you you don't overdo it as well because remember it's a physical and a mental activity after about an hour in my case it takes a mental toll so i can't listen properly anymore everything either sounds damn good or everything sounds like crap it sounds awful so you don't want to bother after an hour you want to probably take a break maybe practice an instrument or just sleep or watch tv get back the next morning and then go at it again but again with energy with aggression with intensity okay and use a few tools to help you optimize your workflow maybe you want to plan some hardware which helps you mix faster or do all your recording work faster rather than type those long key commands and shortcuts and what not so invest in things if you feel oh i'm getting fast with my software you need to make your the time taken to do certain things value measure that time you know and also another way to optimize your workflow are things like what distracts you in a lot of cases instagram the phone or someone uh, in your house might distract you whoever it may be so you need to kind of figure out when to shut off and just do that 
no matter what it could also be the environment you are in maybe in your uh, studio that is the best place to work you know but it should not be the place to do everything because then you won't value the studio so what i tend to do i do my other work somewhere else and then in the studio i just do hardcore uh, music production or music composition or uh, aggressive music making but with a lot of passion i guess the word aggression should be changed to passion which i don't want to change because i like aggression and intensity i like that sports person's mentality a bit when i'm uh, producing music even though it's not really a sport so we have two more things you need to focus on which are very important for me the next one is music history you need to know the past you need to know the present and you also probably need to predict the future so the past is so important because if you're listening to let's say an ed sheeran or you're listening to miley cyrus or lady gaga or ar rahman i'm sure all of them would be linked to some artist which they all adore and love and if you haven't heard that artist there's something fundamentally wrong with you i guess so what if all four of them heard but you know die hard beatles fans and all of them say that if the beatles were not there man we would not be making music and if you have not heard beatles well you have to follow that road map you have to follow that that the tree of life so to speak in in music go to the beatles digest dive into their music and continue to enjoy ed sheeran coldplay and lady gaga there's no harm in continuing to listen listen to them but don't forget where they came from so music history can teach you a lot it can also teach you the actual history or the the situation going on in that part of the world in that era for example blues music didn't come through with a lot of fun and party no it happened through a lot of trials and tribulations people were working in in you know mines and uh, uh, fields in the hot sun and composing music with their voice they didn't have instruments and they wanted to protect their art they wanted to protect their art by playing some ridiculously tough music which ended up being bebop and jazz and uh, ragtime which us piano players love of course and so on so history makes a lot of things happen there is also the renaissance period which made a lot of people a lot more creative so what happened to start of the renaissance period was very important uh, when did the first uh, street theater thing happen and at which point did they say that music is useful and then when did that become broadway and then when did uh, john coltrane um, play a broadway song on the saxophone and that became the greatest jazz thing ever done you know so it all happens because of certain historic reasons so study your history also know what was going into the minds of those composers back then for all you know mozart may have made a lot of songs and so did bach but they might have been pushed by a few organizations bach was definitely pushed by his church to compose music for the sunday mass and every week you would imagine him to not imagine every week he actually made new music for each mass which is unheard of today and mozart was kind of paraded by his royal ruler to kind of make some awesome unheard of music he was kind of a prize uh, to to showcase to all his rich um, people who would come to you know banquet and what not and to ha- have a celebration so mozart had to constantly produce new music to even have the chance to live in that particular palace uh, you must have seen the movie amadeus which shows a bit of this stuff right so definitely study your history it's a very important thing and it can change the way you think about life as a musician it's not necessarily about you you know it's it's about this entire great art form and the evolution of our great art form just like every other thing on planet earth which has evolved over a co- probably a few billion years right so let's move forward to the last point which i think is something we all ask ourselves how do you find inspiration because as a producer you don't you're not an engine you're not a machine you can't just sit and make songs you have to find inspiration so the thing i'd like to tell about that is look at multiple 
environments where you can potentially make music and respect all those environments so for example if you are in a party with friends you know the something might happen you you might actually come up with a with a riff you might think of a bass riff now you are in a party what do you do do you leave the party well that will be impolite so you have to figure out a way to maybe go to the restroom or go to that balcony or the garden and sing that idea capture that idea immediately and tell yourself tomorrow morning i'm going to finish that off i'm going to finish out that song you could be in a car you could be waiting for a flight or you just need to accept music and allow it to come to you and probably realize that music at the end of the day needs to come to you you are not really making the music it's just the air molecules which do their thing and create this incredible art form so in simple words i would just say be in the zone chill out don't be too pressured and don't be too you know but tortured by oh i have to produce a song it has to be damn good no wait for it to come to you and when it comes to you accept it but to wait for it to come to you you need to be there you, you shouldn't take a long vacation i guess you shouldn't you should try to produce you should try to create you should try to practice practicing is also very important as you try as you get things wired into your brain as you are in the zone so to speak and as you are respecting your environment trust me music will come to you and then it just organically comes out there no matter what it just has to happen and that's where the production software the daw the knowledge of mixing mastering and music technology and all the gear that we use to help us microphones cables and audio interfaces and the like will all help you uh, take your creations not only to the next level but bring it to the final stage and create hopefully a timeless listen a timeless product for countless of people over multiple generations across human civilization right guys so hope you found this talk about music production and what you need to dive in and what you need to get into the field useful and we'll be doing a lot more lessons on the subject so don't forget to leave your suggestions in the comment we'll be happy to consider them we've already got a few and in the description we've put together a playlist where all of our tech stuff is listed do consider checking that out and don't forget to hit that subscribe and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications this year and hopefully following years are promising to have a lot of stuff focused on music production not losing sight of what this channel also does which is theory ear training and composing and what not so do stay tuned don't forget to hit that button now would be a great time cheers and catch you in the next video